Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new EU4 series on my channel. Now this is with the Denmark patch, the recent Denmark patch. Many new changes, we're going to discover them in this series. I'm really pumped. Uh, but before we go ahead, there's a couple things I want to tell you. Now first of all, you'll probably see that this is not your regular 1444 starting scenario because I've actually gone ahead and exported one of my CK2 games into EU4 and um, well, I've already made a conversion video where I talked all of the about all of the differences between CK2 and EU4 and how that has impacted the save. Uh, so I'll leave a link to that in the description of this video, and I will also leave your link to my CK2 series uh, that basically explains how the world come uh, comes to look the the way it does right now. So if you want to check that out, then please do um, before you go ahead and, and watch this video, because otherwise you can't really enjoy it as much as you otherwise could. So that being said, um, I also want to just remind you guys that I would want to play this uh, series a little bit different than I usually play my EU4 games. Because what, what happens in, in most of my games, I set out, I have uh, one or more achievement, one, one or yeah, one or more achievements that I want to obtain, and I do basically everything in my power to get these achievements. Uh, also maybe as quick as possible. Not not always, but I try to get them uh, as soon as I can. Uh, right. So, uh, but this is a game that is coming from CK2 that's been uh, converted over. So I want to do things a little bit different um, and I want to stick more to roleplay. Now, obviously it's not going to work as well as it would if this was a CK2 game, but our rulers still have traits. So, for example, our current ruler, the Basilissa Mariah II, she's very old, 63 years old. She's been ruling our country for, well, yeah, the last 40 years almost. Oh no, she has. She has actually ruled our country for uh, the last 46 years, and she's done an amazing job. Now, her nickname is actually Basilissa Mariah the Holy, and that is uh, because she's been fighting several great wars against uh, the Baris, the, the, the Baris Sultanate, the Ilkhanates, uh, as well as uh, even the Golden Horde, I, I believe. But in any case, she has taken, uh, she's reclaimed uh, the holy city of Jerusalem for the Orthodox faith, and um, yeah, this is just one of her many accomplish, uh, accomplishments. So, um, it actually makes a lot of sense that she is a zealot, and she has some other ruler traits here. And basically, the way I want to do this is that some of the more important decisions I want to make based on the traits of our rulers. Now, as I said, this is not going to work as well as it would in CK2 because we only have three traits at the most, and they're not always, you know, really going to help us uh, make a decision. But uh, during events, you oftentimes uh, have op options that are only available uh, if your character or your ruler has a certain trait. So we'll always pick them, that's quite obvious, but um, I also want to set certain goals for our ruler. So uh, for example, if uh, if our ruler would have just been inaugurated, right? Uh, I would like you guys uh, to just come up with ideas of what we should do. And these ideas should be somewhat tied to the traits of our ruler. So for example, if we had a zealot ruler, just like we have right now, we would obviously try to fight religious enemies, we would try to uh, suppress heresies, uh, convert other nations, all these kind of things. We wouldn't necessarily ally uh, heathens, all these kind of things. This is kind of what we would do. Uh, and maybe, for example, if we had to, if we were to lose Jerusalem, and we would then have another zealous character, we would make everything we could, everything in our power, to regain the holy city. Uh, I hope that you kind of get uh, catch my drift here and get the idea of, of what I'm trying to say. Uh, but this is basically how I want to play this campaign. And um, yeah, uh, that's just as a... As a um, well, information here in the beginning. Now, I did, as I said, make a conversion video uh, to kind of go over all of the changes uh, going from CK2 to EU4, but since I'm now using a different version of the EU4 game, a couple of things have changed. First of all, we are actually now a zealot. In the last, the last time I converted the game, I, we did not, we were not zealous. There was some other, I think we were even tolerant. I think that was quite the opposite. We had a tolerant character, which didn't really fit exactly. So I'm, sh I'm very happy that this is now corrected. Um, but uh, there's also one other big change. 
and that is uh, that we can see when we look at the great power. So we still have Ming here, which is obviously an EU4 thing. We have the Karites, the Ilkhanat, and the Baris. They have all been very powerful in the CK2 game as well. And then you can see the Aztec as well as the Inca on here. Now this is because when I converted over this game, I had the Sunset Invasion turned on, and that makes the nations in the New World extremely powerful. But you know what? I think this is actually kind of fun. Um, so we're just gonna keep that. This is different. I don't know why uh, it did not happen when I converted the game last time, but I, I actually enjoy that because that's kind of fun. A lot of you people have actually suggested that uh, we should try and obviously restore the Roman Empire in this in this campaign, and that's something I definitely want to do. Uh, but also a lot of people wanted to see a new Rome in the new world, and this is going to be just more interesting if we actually have someone uh, powerful to fight over there. So yeah, that's just, uh, you know, concerning the changes that have been, uh, well, that, that have happened during the or because of the Denmark patch, I should say. So yeah, without further ado, uh, without without further ado, there you go. Uh, I think we should just start and uh, well go ahead with this series. So um, yeah, uh, I think we should actually start by looking at a character. Now I have been playing the Basilisa Mariah in CK2 for a long time, and she has the nickname the Holy, which does not appear here in EO4, but we should just keep that in mind uh, for our series right now. Um, so since she is 63 years old, I don't think she's going to live all that long, so we don't really need to have, I don't really think we need to come up with certain goals for, uh, for Mariah the Second, because that simply doesn't make much sense. What I want you guys to do is come up with uh, goals for our for her heir, Photheus, because he's going to take over probably in the next episode, uh, or maybe even this episode, if I ever get to unpause. And uh, then I kind of want you guys to tell me what we should do. Should we uh, go ahead and, and take over, well, take on Ilkhanate, or should we just try and say at peace because he's an administrator? Just uh, let me know in the comment section, and uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll just take it from there. But yeah, um... Uh, as Mariah, I think we're just gonna try and keep the status quo. We have Jerusalem, and we would like to convert that, if possible, um, which is currently not possible due to, uh, well, Sunni, mi minus 2%. This is really the problem. So I guess what we're gonna have to do is get an advisor that will help us with the conversion. Unfortunately, we do not have anyone, so that's something we're gonna have to fix. Maybe we can talk to our clergy here and see if we can get a minister. A theologian? No, we would need to have an inquisitor here. That needs to be, f well, what do they need? They need a influence of 40%. So I think we're going to seek support of the clergy here. We're going to do that. And then we're going to go ahead and ask for a inquisitor. I think that would make a lot of sense. And we'll try and hire him as well. So there he is. He's going to cost four gold. Uh, or four ducats m a month, but I think we're able to sustain that. Yeah, we're making quite a lot of money, so let's go and hire Timotheus Const Constus as our Inquisitor, and he's going to help us convert Jerusalem, as that is uh, one of the main goals of Mariah the Holy. So this should be possible now? It is. So let's start the conversion right away. And uh, yeah, this is obviously uh, just uh, just one thing that I really wanted to do. But now we should also do the regular things that are always important. So we need to pick some rivals. Now, um, we have Hungary, England, France, all of these people rivaling us, but we don't really care about them. We care about the Baris, the Ilkhanate, as well as the Great Horde. And I think those are the big bullies, the big Sunni bullies, or, well, in this case, Hurufi, which is a Shia heresy. Uh, Muslim, in any case. Muslim bullies that, uh, well, we need to get rid of. And therefore, I think they should be our rivals. So first of all, we'll, we'll pick the Baris. Second, we'll pick the Ilkhanate. And thirdly, as I said, it would just make sense to actually pick the Great Horde, even though, actually, I don't think we've ever fought the Great Horde in CK2, but still, they are threatening our realm, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, they might even hold some... No, this is still the Arcana. Okay, okay, so they don't actually hold any of our lands, but still, they are very close. I mean, we border them uh, multiple 
uh, multiple uh, provinces. So yeah, I think it, it just makes sense to try and get rid of them. So um, now that we have set up our enemies, we should also try and get some allies. Now, as you can see, we have one vassal already. That's Anatolia, and that's currently ruled by, I believe, our cousin, Ostathius Palai Palaiologus. So uh, there he is. Uh, he's currently not very happy with us. He's actually... Yeah, he feels very powerful, so uh, I guess improving relations with him would be a good idea. Now, he is not the only, uh, well, the only Pelagolos that is uh, that is ruling, um, because obviously we are the Empress of Byzantium, then we have the Exarch of Anatolia, he's been helping us in our crusades quite a bit, but then we also have a small little lordship over here that's held by another member of our family, Umbo Umberto, Duke Umberto Palaigolos, and um, I've already checked the uh, the influence options, and he would actually offer peaceful vassalization. Now, he's a Catholic, but I feel like, uh, as a zealot, it would be important for us that all of our family members would uh, accept the right religion. So we're not gonna go and attack them. I think we're gonna try and settle this diplomatically. We have an exclave of uh, Byzantine provinces over here. We have actually a rather strong holdout and we could strengthen this by incorporating Montferrat into our territory. So I think we should offer them an alliance first or, well, no, actually, let, let's go ahead and improve relations first. We'll accept an alliance with them even though they're the wrong religion because once they accept vassalship, we can actually force orthodoxy in their country and that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be nice. So yeah, this is what we're gonna do and I think we should also pick some allies. Now, even though Ethiopia down here, the, the Ethiopians are Coptic, they have been... Uh, we actually had an alliance in CK2, and the marriage alliance with the Abbasids, well, no, not the Abbasids, but the Abyssinians, uh, which is now Ethiopia and EO4, and I just feel like it kind of makes sense, they're a nice balancing power to the Bari Sultanate, which is our biggest threat, so I feel like we should offer an alliance uh, with them as well. The other alliance, uh, I would probably uh, like to, uh, uh, well like to form with Muscovy or Novgorod, but Novgorod doesn't like us that much, so probably Muscovy because they can be a another strong orthodox power in this region, helping us against the Sunni Great Horde. So yeah, this is that. Uh, we're improving relations with our vassal, we're gonna get another vassal, we're gonna get some alliances set up, that's all nice. Uh, as for mission, uh, yeah, what uh, achieving religious unity seems like something we would be very much interested in, but conquering Ingil I'm not entirely sure where Ingil is. So, where is Ingil? Is that is that over here somewhere? Oh, that's over here in the Great Hood. I don't really think that's where we would want to go right now. I think achieving religious unity is more important for Zealous characters. So we're gonna go for that. Uh, anything else that I have missed uh, right now? No. I think we have our advisor. We could go for, yes, a discipline advisor would make sense for a strict ruler as well. So we'll go for this. And then probably a trade efficiency makes sense as well, since we're an entrepreneur. So our advisors resemble our ruler's traits uh, very well. Uh, in fact, they're actually the exact uh, same pictures, which is kind of cool. So I like that already. Uh, things, are, things are looking good. Things are definitely looking good. Okay, so this is all set up. And we could build castles. Now, I see that we have a castle in uh, Thessaly. Uh, right here, but this is not really all that useful. It's in grasslands, and there's mountains right here, which would be much more suited for a castle. So I think I'm actually going to get rid of this castle, because it doesn't really give us any bonuses, and we'll rather use our money to build castles somewhere else. Now, there would be an excellent spot to build a castle right here in Wallace, because it's in mountains, and it is controlling the pass. Now, this is one of the new things implemented with the Denmark patch, these, uh, well, these wastelands in the Alps, and in other mountainous regions as well, like the uh, Carpe uh, Carpathia, or I don't know what it's called, I don't know what this mountain range is called, I, I know the German uh, name, but anyways, so yeah, uh, yeah, so I, I think this would be a perfect spot for fortress right here, but I think we should rather, uh, well, maybe, hmm, spend our money to build a fortification here in Constantinople. Maybe that's more important, but we don't really have any, any enemies close by, so I don't think, I think we're just gonna save our money for now, or what we could also do, let me see, is this, this is highlands, this is mountains as well. I think a fortress here would be good, and maybe a fortress here in 
uh, in Sidon, since that's also a mountainous fort. So that would kind of make sense, fortifying the Holy Land or fortifying this. Um, I don't know. I don't know. This is going to be too far away from Jerusalem. Anyways, I think we're going to actually start and fortify Erzin Khan. I think Erzin Khan should be fortified next. 200 gold, but that kind of, that to me, seems like it's worth it. Okay, now, uh, we have actually somewhat big fleet, only four trade ships, but that's okay. We're going to send you to protect trade in Constantinople. Uh, what are our traders doing anyways? I would like to know that. Uh, can we can we can you see that? So you're over here in Crimea as well as in Aleppo. Uh, that's fine. I think that's that's totally fine. Uh, we'll let you do that. Our home node is obviously Constantinople. That's okay. We're making a decent amount of money from trade, which is amazing. I hope that actually stays that way. Okay, so we have one small army up there. Um, okay, and we have a lot of transport ships. I don't think we need all of these transport ships necessarily. So, hmm. Let's actually get you guys out and maybe split you in half. Maybe I can sell four ships to Anatolia, I'm not too sure. Probably won't be able to do that. But then we have kind of our war fleet. I think this is just going to be our war fleet um, that we have here. And we'll, we'll just send you here. We'll not mothball you just yet because I mean to go to war. Um, relatively soon, I would like to take out the independent uh, Tigin Sultanate. It has only one province, and uh, we actually have a claim on it because we are, well, we have claims on all of the de jure parts of the Byzantine Empire. So we should try and take that over uh, quickly. But yeah, anyways, uh, for now, I think we're actually, we don't have any more diplomats left. We have pretty much done everything we could. Now, I do want to build a little bit more troops. We have, you have one horse there, so let's build one horse here, build one horse here, and how many more can we, can we go for? Eight. So I feel like a little bit more infantry would be nice on, on your part, to be quite honest, yes. Um, and I want you to then give me, give me one horse. Yeah, that's fine. And eight, and you have... 10 so you can get two more infantry all right and we'll i guess we'll save the rest of our money for now all right let's move let's move forward and see how things develop uh ethiopia has accepted our alliance that's very nice so we'll need to wait for our diplomat to return and then i can actually go ahead and offer an alliance uh well monfred is asking uh, you know what we'll accept we'll accept our, our cousins um and we'll, we'll accept the alliance with our cousins. That's totally fine. And I think we're going to offer the alliance to Muscovy as they are friendly. And they're not a strong orthodox nation. That's going to help us quite a bit. Okay, perfect. So, we have established our alliances. One, just kind of a, a balancing measure uh, measure uh, against the Bari Sultanate. Another one, maybe against the Great Horde. And then our family members. Uh, just to make sure that they are all following the right religion. Perfect. Okay, now, uh, with my diplomat back... I would like to try and, okay, uh, Aragon is a March of Aragon, very good, um, so that's, that's kind of cool, but yeah, I would like to sell ships, now you are now actually, okay, you're no longer disloyal, that's very good, okay, let's see what we can do, I would like to sell some ships to you, as I don't need them. You need only one transport ship, so you're not really interested in my transport ships, I see that. Okay, well, I'm gonna mothball them. No, I'm not gonna mothball them. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go after Cyprus. Cyprus is independent, they do not have any allies, but we actually have a claim on this. And securing this would be quite useful, but I did say I would go after Tegans. Oh, they're allied with the Baris. Okay, the ally with the Baris, that kind of puts a damper on my plans because I don't think we're ready to fight the Bari Sultanate just yet. Let's have a quick look at the total amount of troops. They have 30,000 manpower, which is almost twice as much, and they also have more, yeah, more troops. And they also come with their, uh, with their own vassals, the Ayyubids and the Ismailids. So I don't think we should declare war. I think instead we're going to try and take over Cyprus. No one's going to help them. They don't have any allies. So I think we're just going to take that over. Yes. Because then we have a nice launching point. First of all, we're going to have a little bit more vision and it's going to help us supply our uh, provinces in, in, the, uh, in the Holy Land, I think. Okay. So let's go ahead 
and recruit a general. Do I want my heir? I think our heir should lead uh, men into battle. That's very good. Fotheus, there you are. And we'll wait for... Do I want to wait for our troops to get ready? No. But we will send the war fleet, first of all, to kind of see what's going on in Cyprus. And then we'll, we'll send the rest of our forces. Yes. Okay, so Musqui wants to have a royal marriage. Now, we'll, I guess we shall accept that. Um, and our cousins will accept that as well. Sure, we'll accept that. Um, so, Giovanni Palaigolos. So, we did marry our cousin first. So, uh, Giovanni Palaigolos, he is from Montferrat. And he's now uh, ruling beside us. Good. We'll see what his personality is. He's a pretty good commander, it seems. I wish we could make him... A general as well. Bulgaria wants military axes. I do not think that we will accept that. No. That's one of the few things we will not accept, in fact. Okay, so uh, you need one more horseman, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So we'll wait for that. And okay, so there's 5,000 right there. Okay. That's okay. We can. Ah. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll wait. We'll wait a little bit. So we're making some decent cash. We're making money from vassals. Oh, wow. Our trade money is not that high. But I think we gained a little bit in production. Okay. Um, sweet. So, um, we're improving relations with all of you. That's that's all good. All right. Things are, things are looking up. All right. Uh, all of our troops are ready. I think 14,000 are enough. And I'll send you right here and we can start the invasion of Cyprus. Now what we should do, since we have all of these great rivals, we should probably go ahead and embargo the Bari Sultanate, uh, issue an embargo here, we should do the same thing with the Ilkhanate and then probably with the Great Horde as well. There you go, issue an embargo and the Great Horde once once we're back, uh, we, we obviously, oh look at this, our, uh, our kin in Anatolia has actually decided to send over some forces as well. 7,000 men is what they're bringing. That's pretty good. Um, hopefully, ooh, hopefully, oh, we're gonna be too late. It seems like we're gonna be too late. Hopefully that's not gonna happen. But anyway, uh, France is gonna gain a claim on our country. That's not nice. Our kin has, uh, has helped. Well, they have been useful. Um, still, they have not really done uh, done the job perfectly. Okay, so I think, how many do we need here? 3,000? So, let's just leave you here. In fact, no, you know what? Since uh, Fotheus has a l siege bonus, we'll just uh, do it like this and have four people here, and you go back on the ships. Perfect. Alright, so, the first invasion was successful, and we'll send you back to Constantinople. Um, awesome. So, there's a fortress. Okay, you have a fortress as well. That's very nice. Um, hmm. Okay, did I send a uh, insult? I don't think... Uh, well, an insult. Never mind. Uh, uh, embargo. That's what I wanted to do. We might send an insult to the Baris. That's something we could do. Because they are, after all, heathens. So, it would kind of make sense to do that. And it would in increase our power projection by quite a bit. So, yeah, let's do that. Perfect. I like that. And how how much longer until we can get you as a vassal? Your independence is guaranteed by Lombardy. All right. Well, I'm actually going going to do that. Vassalize, uh, have an alliance in relation of 190, and the target country must be at peace. So what could I do? I could proclaim a guarantee as well. I think we should do that. Yes. Uh, just because it's going to make it a little bit faster to. Uh, I'll take them over. Naples declared war on Pax. Now this is interesting because if I remember correctly, Pax is a vassal of Hungary. So we have Naples at war with Hungary. You are allied to France and Ferrara, which is actually quite bad because Naples and their vassal Sicily hold lands that are, well, rightfully ours. And uh, yeah, having to fight France for it would be quite annoying. So hopefully Hungary is going to do well in this. And in fact, I'm actually going to be supporting Hungary in this, um, even though they have rivaled us. I think I will actually support them by giving them military access if I can. Yeah. All right, anything else? No. Uh, I was going to try and improve some more relations with Montferrat. Uh, revoke guarantee, transfer trade power. That would be something. That'd be something I could do. How about, actually, you know what? Offer military access. There you go. That should... 123... 
All right, request to share maps. France declared war on Aragon. Oh, wow, this is a big one. This is a big one. This is a real big one. Now, France is obviously incredibly powerful, and they're now fighting Aragon, two Aragons, at the same time. Uh, how are they going to do that? That is going to be impossible. Now, uh, there, there are obviously a couple very interesting places. Aragon and Naples, they have the same dynasty. So there could be a union between Aragon and Naples. That would be very interesting to see. Obviously, the whole Iberian Peninsula is interesting because Portugal, Castile, and Aragon are all equally strong uh, because of their holdings in the New World. Uh, not in the New World, but in Africa. Um, and then England, or the, the British Isles, are very interesting uh, because of Ireland, Scotland... Wales and England all existing, coexisting. The HRE, it's going to be interesting to see who comes out on top. And then obviously this whole mess uh, is, is going to be very interesting to see who will get the upper hand. But yeah, let's actually go ahead and, and, and focus on, on our war here. I would love to finish the siege here. The Karaites have declared a war. Yes, uh, that's okay. Uh, and Anatolia, it seems like our kin is eager to finish the siege. Um for us. I, I guess we could uh, we could do that. Now the nobility wants to have all the rights. I think we will accept these demands. Yes, we shall do that. And I think it's also quite possible that we could... Oh, we do not have any transport ships. Well, that was... That's kind of smart. We should definitely take them. Alright, well, Cyprus has fallen, so I think we're just going to go ahead and accept their annexation. We'll also take whatever they have left in their treasury. There we go. And our first successful well, our first war uh, that we've uh, that we fought in EU4 has been a success. So, yeah, at this point, I think I'm just going to have to end this episode. Now, I do want to remind you guys that you should let me know um, what our what our heir uh, should do. Uh, as a minus touch, this is all we know of him uh, right now. Once he takes over, should he even try and start any wars or should he just try and consolidate our power uh, economically or whatever i guess we can you know you can hold off on that w once he is actually inaugurated but for now uh you know you can already leave your thoughts anyways though uh that was it uh, i'm gonna have to end this first episode here thank you so much for watching i hope you have enjoyed and i'll see you guys next time